Okay, guys, it's Mac with the Outer Circle, and what you are seeing right now is based upon the video that I did yesterday. Yeah, it'll be yesterday. So, in that video, I spoke about how Games Workshop's rules have a lot of issues in that they don't start from a common point and then extrapolate from there. They don't add to a starting building block when it comes to creating the values of units. And that's why identical units in different armies have incredibly diverse ranges of points and power levels. And so because of this, I've started work on creating this sheet. And I know it's a bit of a, a visual nightmare at the moment, but I will work on it, I will tweak it, I will refine it. But what happens on this sheet is we have the enter values line and we have the baseline. So right up the top here, Baseline is our green, and this is what I've picked as the starting save profile, uh, leadership, attacks, initiative, wounds, strength, toughness, all that. It's like, okay, this is the most basic level in the game, right? Where it's like, this is so pathetic. There's no point in taking stats away from it and decreasing points values. It's just, this is where you have to begin. And that's been assigned a points value of two. And that's weapon skill two, ballistic skill two, strength, toughness three, one wound, three initiative, one attack, leadership five, six plus armor save, no invul. Simple. And you can see that with the exact same stat in the enters value, our points value spits out at the same, two. But if I was to change this to weapon skill three, our points went up. It didn't go up by much. What if I went up to weapon skill seven? Okay, it jumped dramatically. So what's going on here? Well, coded into these lines is some pretty simple formulas. And what happens is, as we increase the values in here, it will take the different formulas coded into those lines and it will spit out a series of numbers that will give us something that is better suited to uh, actually working out a points value. So let's actually put a Marine into this stat line. So four, 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 one, four, one, seven, three. And it's 15 points is what we get. And that to me makes a lot more sense. Uh, when we compare say Legion's Imperialis, uh, sorry, uh, Imperialis Militia, I'm getting too confused now in my old age. Imperialis Militia's basic um, conscript stat line their penal battalions, as it were, to a space marine, and just how much they will get their butt kicked on the tabletop, it makes sense that you could probably get eight of them for the cost of a space marine, give or take. Uh, and that is before we add in any other factors such as special rules, because special rules are something I haven't put onto the sheet yet, but would add additional values onto these units. And the idea of the sheet is not to give you the perfect, this is the number that gets spat out, this is what you must use. It's the guide, the starting point, before your play test and the human designer comes in and goes, all right, let's change this up, let's tweak it, let's move these values around. Um, I think a D10 system is the best way to go, but all I'm doing with creating these formulas is trying to make something for the existing game system, right? So if those are marine values, what happens if I changed it to a Terminator? So extra attack, extra wound, uh, they're going to go to 2 plus save. They're going to go to a, ooh, let's say they're cataphractite. 46 points. What if they were Tartarus? 41 points. So a five point difference, which actually worked out to be the same as the difference in the current tabletop. But there are a lot more points per model. And again, this is before we include Relentless and Heavy into the equation, which would be points modifiers on top of this. Oh, and they'd probably be a higher leadership as well, wouldn't they, being veterans? So there we go. That's dramatically different numbers to what the game currently has. What if I was to do a Primark? So average weapon skill 7, bliss skill 5, strength 6, toughness 6, 6 wounds, initiative 6, 6 attacks, leadership 10, a 2 plus save, and a 4 plus invol. So the basic stat line on a Primark with this spits out at 202 points before war gear and before any special rules. So that's your internal warrior, your fearless, all of that, the non-degrading stat line. Those are massive modifiers. So just on raw stats alone, 
And funny enough, if I change just a couple of these stats, let's say these ones, and I get something approximating a Contemptor Dreadnought, for instance, what do we get here? Hmm, 149 points before any of the Dreadnought special rules or its war gear. So we're pretty much at the points of a, a stock contempt of Dreadnought before adding any of the equipment on, which means I think we're onto something with this sheet. Um, and this is actually my first time testing the sheet out. And <laughs> so I'm learning as I go. If I've made mistakes, you get to see it live as it happens. Or maybe I can edit it out. I don't know. Okay. So let's go back to our Marine example. So I'll re-modify all these values down to a basic Marine. Uh, beautiful. And we're back to our 15 points. Now I can go down and select some war gear. We'll give him a, a bolt gun. It's force multiplier. It's gonna instant kill the guy above him. Goes up to 16 points. Okay, that's fair. What if I was to give him a melter gun? 27 points. Oh, that's quite the jump, but that's quite the weapon. So, and what if he was to be a ballistic skill 5? Say he's a veteran. Oh, 35 points. So, there's an exponential growth happening here where the war gear is staying similar prices, but as the stats go up, they go up by dramatic values. And I can show you this in action. Let's take, um, let's pick attacks, okay? So, one attack is at 13 points. At four attacks, he's at 23. Okay, it's a lot, but it's not crazy. At six attacks, he's at 43. At eight attacks, 73. At nine, 93. And at 10, 113. So there's 100 points added just in attacks. And you can see the numbers as they spit up on this chart. So, it gets, you know, it's 80 here, it's it's 100 here, uh, 60, 50, 30. Like, the, the changes, um, I might even modify that so it goes like 30, 45, 60. I think that's a better value. So I'm going to modify that now. Live on camera. Look at that. Look at how we go. Beautiful. So... The idea here being that we need to express these things as certain values on the tabletop. And the more we deviate, and again, I pick the lowest basically possible stat line in the game. I mean, okay, technically you can go down to initiative two, strength two, toughness two. But at that point, I don't think it's worth even taking points off. The creature that you've created is so pathetic. Anything can cough, or sneeze, or fart in its direction. It's going to keel over. So there's no point reducing the points value at, at, you know, once you've hit that. So instead, what I've tried to do is create this, this sheet that gives us all of the stat lines that I can plug in. And what I will do is I will just populate it with more of these checkboxes over to the side that adds in all the different weapon types, essentially. And once I've added in all of those different weapon types, um, then I'll start looking at how to do the special rules. And that in and of itself is going to be a nightmare because, you know, Furious Charge means nothing on a strength four model but on a strength seven model serious charge can mean an awful lot so that's going to be its own nightmare to come up with i think there might be a you know a bonus modifier i have to put in there like if strength equals greater than seven add this additional modifier that's the way it's going to have to work i'm going to have to use if all rules which are a pain in the butt in excel spreadsheets um but there you go. That is the maths of what I'm creating here. And this is probably taking me about an hour and a half to get to this point here, uh, which is not a huge amount of time. And my point in doing this exercise is, well, it's two things. First, I don't believe in throwing critique and shade at the company, the writers, or people in general without having a fix of my own. Um, I think that's just, one, a point of pride, but two, it's courteous. You shouldn't be just going out there and saying, well, this is crap without being able to offer solutions. Uh, that's the first part of it. The second part is, this is such an easy exercise to perform. My question is, is why is this not being implemented already? Games Workshop only needs to hire, you know, a mathematician, a statistician, 
a games designer, you know, one time, get them to create the formulas, get them to create a chart like this one time and get it right, basically. And then they can just tweak as they go and make little refinements to it. Uh, but once they've implemented the groundwork, the foundational system, uh, they can then just copy and paste the work across and it will make everything so much easier. It's just a big job doing it the first time. And rather than taking all these additions, you know, additions are one of a funny thing where it's like, here is a fully functioning game system. Um, it has problems. We need to work out those problems to create a new edition. And instead, every time they create a new edition, they just throw the baby out with the bathwater. They go, all right, let's just start taking all those rules we knew worked in the previous edition and creating new ones or getting rid of the old ones. You go, well, hang on a minute. You've just, all the work you did trying to fix the balance in the last one, you've just created all new issues. Keep the old rules that worked, tweak the rules that didn't to try and fix the game. Stop trying to reinvent it. And yes, there are things like a narrative in the game. Narrative values. Now, I should probably add movement onto this chart, looking at it now. But whilst there are narrative values in this game, such as movement, um, movement is one of those ones where it's, I think you need to be able to sacrifice it for the element of gameplay. And that's why I like the old six-inch movement system so much. It's like, look, it just makes everything nice and easy to get your head around you don't have to think, oh, well, actually, this unit's got um, cataphract eye armor. So they're actually going one inch slower than that Terminator unit next to them. It's in Tartarus armor. It's, it's, it's such a bother. And it doesn't add any narrative depth that I'm sitting there as I'm playing the game going, man, I think it's so cool that these Terminators have one inch different movement to those Terminators. How thematic. No, I think it's just bothersome. And I think most people fall into the camp of that's just bothersome. In which case, I say, well, it shouldn't exist in the game then, you know? Uh, same as when you create a sheet like this with stat lines and war gear and such, and two units get spat out in the same slot on the force org chart with the same sort of stat lines, um, or competing for similar positions, such as tactical support squad versus the legion heavy support squad. And you go, well, one has inferior weapons to the other, but how come the tactical support squad costs more? It doesn't have any of the bonuses of being troops beyond being able to fill up a non-compulsory troop slot but they cost more than the Legion Heavy Support. I would rather the Legion Heavy Support, which has up to four times the range of many of those weapons, and is cheaper and more survivable, and is no less competent when it comes to things like scoring, because neither of them can score. Um, you know, it, it, those are situations where it's like, this shouldn't exist in the game. And yeah, anyway, I got like a million of those thoughts, so I'm going to leave this there, but that's it for me. I'm Mac with the Outer Circle. Let me know what you think of this matrix and if you understand exactly what I'm getting at here. Um, not trying to reinvent the wheel as such, more just a case of this can be made into a simple formula that can spit us out some pretty predictable results. Getting the formula right in the first place is hard and I've assigned arbitrary values of what I think they should be based on previous editions. War gear cost it was like, well, it was 10 points for plus one wound in this edition, and it was 15 for plus one wound in this edition. Well, let's, you know, pick a number is what I've done. That doesn't mean I've done it correctly. So this is your chance to spit some feedback out. And then once I have fully populated this uh, spreadsheet, I'm just going to make it public. And then you can take it and you can do what you want with it. Because this is the foundation, I think, all sorts of games in Games Workshop should be built around. Have a common starting point, the datum, the point at which all other measurements are taken from, and use this to create the values for your units so that if we have a, well, let's take a Gnomus right hand. This is before I wrap up the video. Let's take Gnomus right hand, okay? As currently implemented with his battle hardened and blah, 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 versus our, there you go just needs his war gear versus uh, Sigismund's profile. Well, actually, actually, i got one mistake there because Gnomus only has three wounds. <laughs> 97 points he spits out at, uh, whereas Sigismund already spits out 109. Uh, oh, and I've got to do that fourth wound for Sigismund, 110. Mm, I think I need to uh, increase 
the rate at which those wounds go up mm, from three wounds to four wounds is too low a value. Yeah, I think I need to change that. If wounds equals four, that should be 10 points. And if wounds equals three, that should be at least seven points based off the old system. See, this is how we tweak it as we go. And then I'm like, okay, so now from here, all the other numbers have to climb up proportionately because wounds are a big deal. Um, yeah, that changed things quite a bit. If I go down to three wounds, up to five, up to five. Yeah, so you can already see changes occurring to this sheet as I go. And the hard part is just getting the sheet right in the first place. So see what we can come up with over time. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm back with the other circle. The uh, person who's working on this sheet very, very, very slowly. Um, but like I said, this is after an hour and a half's work. So not a lot has gone into it yet. But I think a company with over a billion dollars uh, valuing uh, like Games Workshop surely can invest in creating a sheet like this of their own to take out most of the work for the writing team where the game's design should spit you out these numbers, this is what a unit approximately should cost, and then you play test it correctly, take the feedback on for once, and then you assign new values that tweaks it up and down from there based on how it actually performs. And that would get you a far more balanced game. Not perfect, nobody expects perfection because no game is truly balanced, but it will get you a damn sight closer than what you currently have which is an infuriating mess. Anyway, that's it for me. Make the outer circle. I hope you all have a lovely day and I'll catch you on the next video.